Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, in this lesson we're going to talk about adjusting clips in our timeline. Because we've already gone through editing clips, we've talked a little bit about effects work, and now it's important to get in and discuss manipulating the clips that are in your timeline. Because obviously we're doing an edit, and you're going to want to get in and rearrange clips quickly and easily. This lesson is an essential watch for any editor coming from an application like Final Cut Pro 7 or even Premiere Pro CS6 because you're going to see a lot of the functionality that you have in those applications being shown to you in these next few lessons inside of Media Composer and Symphony. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need a sequence. So I just happen to have some clips here from Digital Juices, Video Tracks HD. And let's just choose some parts of them here. Sure, we're not going to I'm not going to choose that long of a segment here. I'll just hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit this clip into my Creative Cow bin here. And I think what I'll do is just call this bin Sequences, just so we can stay nice and organized. And I'll just take the next clip here. Sure, that's probably pretty good. We'll hit B on the keyboard again. And we're going to pick two more shots here. Sure, I've already got an in and out point marked, so we'll just go with that. And let's find something slightly different here. That's looking nice. Maybe we'll have the bike just sort of go right by the camera there. Okay. So the first technique that I want to talk about is extending clips. Now, extending clips, pretty much what it sounds like. We're going to get in, we're just going to adjust the in or the out point of the shot depending on what we want to manipulate. Now there's an actual function key or a function button that we're going to use to do that. Now, it doesn't come mapped standard onto your keyboard, but it's something you can easily get in and add. And what I normally do is I normally have it mapped right over here on my actual composer window. Now to get to the extend key, very easy, what we're going to do is navigate up to tools. We're going to come down to the command palette, and I believe it's over here inside of trim. Yes, it is. There it is right there, extend. What I'm going to do is a button to button reassignment. All I'm going to do is simply take extend. I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to drop it right on top of the button. And there it is, ready to work with. Now, just for my own sanity, what I'm going to do is come down here to other. I'm just going to take a blank one and stick it right beside extend because I don't need that key because I don't use it very often. We're just going to close the command palette. Now, let's talk about extending a clip. To extend a clip is very simple. The first thing we need to do is to choose which clip we want to extend. So let's just say hypothetically what I want to do is I want to have the in point of this clip start earlier. What a lot of people will do is they'll get into trim mode and start trying to adjust it. For me, I don't particularly like to do that. What I like to do is just basically get in, decide exactly where I want this clip to start, and tell Media Composer Symphony, start it here. And here's how you do it. Let's just say hypothetically I wanted that clip to start here. What I'm going to do is simply mark an in point on my keyboard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I only have the track selected that I want to get in and manipulate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the two audio tracks. I've got my in point marked. All I'm going to do now is simply hit extend and that clip now starts a lot earlier. You see, very simple to use. If you really want to get finite, let's say the producer says, I don't know, we want to have this clip start three frames earlier. You know what? No problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, to click on the edit point so it snaps right to it. And all I'm going to do is, if the client said again, uh, let's go three frames, for example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit minus three frames, so minus three. I'm going to hit Enter, and you'll see that Symphony has jumped back the required amount of frames. All I'm going to do is hit I to mark an endpoint, and I'm going to hit Extend on the keyboard to extend that shot back. So you can see that you can get in and be as precise as you want when you're getting in and extending clips. Now obviously on the flip side of that, what we can also do is adjust the out point. So if I wanted, let's say, the out point of this clip to be a little bit longer, all I have to do is simply navigate down, mark that as an out point, or O obviously on the keyboard, and now I'm going to remove the in point just so that Symphony doesn't get confused, and then all I'm going to do is simply hit the extend key. Now for me, I've always had extend mapped up here on my composer buttons but you might want to have it actually mapped to something on your keyboard. You know what? No problem. We talked about your keyboard settings in an earlier tutorial. I encourage you to go back, check that out, and you'll see how you can map extend onto any one of your keyboard keys. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to talk about adjusting clips in your timeline. And I think what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to add a new video track by pressing Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. 
what I'm going to do is deselect video track one so that my track automatically maps to video layer two. Let's just pick a different shot here. Sure, we'll have these guys bouncing over top of the little bumps here in the track. And again, what we're going to do is come back. I'll mark an in point. I'll remove the out point. And I'm simply going to hit B on the keyboard to overwrite that shot into my timeline. Now, let's say hypothetically what I want to do is I want to take this shot and I don't want to have it on V2. I want to have it cover over this shot here and into most of this shot right here. Well, how we're going to do that is with the segment tools. The segment tools are located right over here on the actual timeline. What I'm going to do is navigate right up to the top and I'm going to choose the lift overwrite segment mode. I'm simply going to select it and once I do, I can now take this clip, I'm going to drag it right back, choose where I want it to go. Now you'll see as I'm dragging back, I can see what's actually going on in the timeline as I get there. I can see the outgoing shot and into the incoming shot. So let's say I wanted to come down and I want to cover this over just like that. All I have to do now is decide where I want it to go, let go, and it's going to overwrite that clip on top of the other clips. Now again, I'm just going to undo what I just did. If I wanted to get in and have the in points snap together, all I have to do is press Control on Windows, Command on the Mac. I can now take this and snap it to that edit point, and there we go. It's now overwritten the clip that was there and most of the other clip, as you can see, right here. Again, I'm just going to undo what I just did because hypothetically, maybe I want to get in and I want to have it take this clip and actually have it insert edited here and push everything else down. You know what? No problem. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch segment modes. You'll see I'm now going to choose Extract or Splice In. What I'm going to do is just deselect the Overwrite tool. I'm going to take this clip, again, drag back. I can hold Control if I want to or Command on the Mac to have it snap to that edit point. And once I have it snapped there and I let go, you'll see it's now taken that clip, it's inserted it into the timeline, and it's pushed everything back now down. So now instead of overwriting that, it's insert edited this shot into the timeline. So you'll see, using your segment modes, a very handy way to move clips around the timeline. Now what I should also encourage you to do here, and I'm just going to double check for one second here. I'm just going to come up to my tools. Uh, it's actually in my settings here. Let's just come down to the keyboard settings. I just want to make sure, perfect, that I have F6 marked as Add Edit, because in some cases, I'll just undo what I just did. You might not want to take this whole clip. Maybe you only want to take part of it. So what I always like to do is I have Add Edit mapped to F6 on my keyboard. I'm just going to hit Add Edit. You'll see I had the wrong layer selected here, so let's select the right layer again, F6 to Add Edit. Now maybe I only want to move this one little part here and just sort of have it over top of the end of one shot and the start of the other. Very cool. You'll see now what happens. If I hit play, we still have that one shot, cut to the other shot, and we're not going to be blasting over top of everything. So add edit is another handy key to map to, in this case, your keyboard, just to get in and be more precise with your editing. Now what I was going to show you here, and I'm just going to remove this clip, I'm going to hit T to mark the entire shot, then I'm going to hit Z on both Mac and Windows. Remember, I'm Canadian, so for me it's Z, for all my American friends it's Z, to lift this out of my timeline. And what I want to do is I actually want to remove this shot right here. Now there's a couple ways that I can do it. What a lot of people will do is they'll come in, they'll hit T to mark the entire clip, and then they'll lift it out by pressing Z on the keyboard. Or what they can do, and now you'll see by hitting Z, that's a lift command. What it's done is it's lifted that clip out and it's left a gap in its place. What I can do is just undo that, because on the flip side, what I can also do is to cut that clip out. I'm going to do that by pressing X on the keyboard, and by doing that, what happens is, is that's a splice command. It cut that clip, pulled it out, and pulled everything together as part of the command. I'm just going to undo what I just did, because again, much like everything in Media Composer and Symphony, there's a bunch of ways to do the same thing. If you happen to be working in segment mode and moving clips around and decided suddenly you don't need this clip anymore, with your segment tool selected for overwrite, you can simply select that clip. I'm just going to hit backspace on the keyboard and you'll see that clip has now been lifted out and a gap has been put in in its place. What I'm going to do is just undo what I just did. Let's switch segment tools to the splice in or the extract tool. And we're just going to do that. We're going to extract this clip from the timeline again by hitting backspace. And by doing that, we're actually going to select the clip here. There we go. Let's hit backspace again, and you'll see I've essentially cut that clip out, and everything has been pulled together to tighten the timeline up. 
So you'll see getting in and moving these clips around and removing clips from your timeline very easy and there are multiple ways to do the same thing. Okay, now in part two in our look at adjusting clips inside of your timelines of Media Composer and Symphony, we're going to take a look at some basic trimming techniques and I'm going to show you a fantastic tool, the Smart Tool, that if you're, like I said, coming from Final Cut Pro 7 or even Premiere Pro CS6, this is a tool that you're really going to be accustomed to coming from those applications and it's really going to speed up your overall workflow and for all you Media Composer and Symphony editors out there who have been editing for a long time that don't use this tool, I'm going to show you why it's a fantastic thing to add to your editing arsenal. So if you've got any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.